OK, there's no doubt many people feel the new Albanese government has much bigger fish to fry. A mood for change swept Labor to power from people hoping for a better deal. It's not a quick fix, it's not going to happen overnight, but it has to happen. We just don't need the yearly stress of having to beg for more. The, the worst thing sometimes about getting into government is you find out that things are as bad as you said they were when you're in opposition. <laughs> it's been nearly two weeks since Anthony Albanese ascended to the nation's top job and he's wasted no time getting to work. I've been in this building now for 26 years. I've had six at this end of the corridor. I don't intend going back. And after a six week long campaign haul, there's plenty of people ready for the new Prime Minister to make a change. I have some hope that as long as they keep listening the way they were when they weren't in power, we will be able to start moving forward again. Michelle McGarrigal says the election was a win for users of the National Disability Insurance Scheme, like her son Liam. The 26-year-old has autism and an intellectual disability and has been on the NDIS since the start. At the beginning it was brilliant. But it's been a battle for Michelle over the past few years, fighting to maintain Liam's package to provide transport to and from his programs. How are you getting home? Sucks. Taxi, that's right. Michelle even had to take the fight to court multiple times, but she won. It was hard, um, but it was a challenge that I saw in the long run was needed so that Liam does get the support he needs and the, and the people who don't have a Michelle to fight for them had an opportunity to, to get it fixed. Now she's hoping the new Labor government, the original architects of the insurance scheme, will restore it to its former glory. So it is fixable, it's a great scheme. It just got to the point where they were so busy counting the pennies, they were forgetting that people are trying to live their lives. But counting the pennies will be a big task for the new government. With record debt and inflation, the cost of living is biting most budgets. The next couple of months are going to be tricky. I don't think anybody's denied that. John McKell is a political expert at QUT and former Labor Speaker in the Queensland Parliament. He says the Labor Party played it safe through the campaign. I don't think they baked in huge expectations uh, there's a body of opinion that says the election was won on the basis of a dislike of the former Prime Minister rather than an embrace of something new. He believes one of the first items on the agenda will be a lift in the minimum wage to help ease living pressures. I think the government focus on trying to get an, a lift in wages for the low uh, skilled, low-wages people will be the first thing. And that's music to aged care worker Glenda Jensen's ears. And I'd like the politicians to maybe freeze their wages for a little while and give it to the, the little low-paying person that's looking after your mum, your wife, your father. Her pay hasn't increased since 2013, but she says the workload has. I don't think it was as bad. I didn't feel as bad nine years ago as what I have over the last five years. She's hoping the Labor government follows through with its pledge to fully fund a wage rise the Fair Work Commission is currently reviewing and increase the number of carers and nurses. Often it's a job that people don't realise how hard it is until they actually get into it. The other election winners, parents with children in daycare who will see savings with an increased subsidy and more help for first home buyers through a shared equity scheme, although that's limited to just 10,000 yearly places. The other winner could well be the environment, with climate change now at the forefront for the new government, thanks to a huge swing to the Greens and Teal independence. I've had a terrific world to live in and climate change can bring real devastation to the, to the humans on this planet. Neil Taylor is a volunteer with Climate for Change. He says for the first time in years, the organisation is hopeful. People, I've got granddaughters and I want a future for my 
granddaughters and their grandchildren and their grandchildren's grandchildren. Now it wants Prime Minister Albanese to go further than current climate targets, including net zero emissions by 2035 rather than 2050. No more coal and gas approvals. It's as simple as that. I believe there's 114 um, potential coal mines on the books in this country and no more. The government has moved quickly on one election promise, signing off to allow the Murugupan family to move back to the Queensland town of Biloela, following years in detention. This has been going on for four years. That... for what? But John believes we shouldn't expect the same rapid action on all matters. He says the new government will tread carefully on other issues, such as plans to scrap the cashless debit card. I think they'll, they'll be cautious with that and just see uh, what the unintended consequences of that one might have been. With the full ministry now sworn in, there's a long list of commitments to meet and the government will be closely examining the books before it hands down a new budget in October. Oh, government's not easy, but anybody would tell you that your worst day in government is, is better than your best day in opposition.